I'm passionate about helping other people make their dreams come true and helping them solve real life challenges. A few years ago, I started my first tech company. So I've been an entrepreneur since I left college. Um, I'm not a sit still kind of person. Um, and so entrepreneurship was my path. Uh, but back in 2014, I had the idea for a small tech company. I raised some venture capital. I ran out of venture capital. And it was through that process um, and just doing a lot of reading that I understood that sometimes the hurdles that are faced are because of who I am and what I look like. I come from a really humble upbringing, um, and not only were there a lot of children, um, but my parents just didn't have a whole lot. And so you have to figure out how to do it. And while um, being black is not a monolith, my spouse comes from a, a long line of doctors and, and all sorts of things, I didn't. And those challenges um, made me who I am. I was one of the first 88 black women in the country to raise any venture. And at that point, I mean, I'd raised just over $400,000. And I thought, well, I've never hit a brick wall before in my life. I've been very successful to that point. And why would this happen because of being a black woman? And so I thought, how do I fix this for my region? And so I got together with um, my two co-founders and we decided to launch an accelerator. So that first pilot year back in 17, um, we brought through three companies, and within 60 days of them graduating, they raised $2.2 million in funding, and we, we had product market fit, <laughs> for sure. Folks like to invest their time and energy and capital into people they know, like, and trust. And we still have issues here in the tech ecosystem nationally, globally, uh, with folks um, you know, bridging that divide. So I think the stat that just came out of within the last two weeks uh, was that 1.2% of all venture went to a black-led company, uh, which doesn't make sense based on the percentage of the population. So how do we kind of correct those things? There's, a, there's another stat that says that just over 98% of assets managed in the U.S. are managed by white males. That means that just over 1% is managed by white women and everyone else. So until we can get capital in the hands of everyone, we won't be able to solve the challenges of, of everyone in the US. Lightship is uh, a foundation that supports remarkable founders from diverse backgrounds. Uh, we provide that education throughout the heartland of the United States and really love our work. So we offer accelerators, boot camps, um, a pitch competition, as well as meetup groups around the country. Uh, and then Lightship Capital is a fund that funds remarkable founders um, also in the heartland in five key categories. So CPG, e-commerce, sustainability, artificial intelligence, and healthcare. So things we do really well here in the center of the country. We do a lot of outreach with uh, Latino, Latina founders. Uh, we do a lot of outreach with black founders. We do a lot of work with LGBTQ founders and we're currently trying to bridge the divide with indigenous founders. Um, and so we just do a lot of outreach. And I think what happens right now in venture is there's a lot of inbound work, and not everyone is trying to do the work of outbound to reach communities that, that aren't, aren't reaching them. So we host a boot camp called Lightship Boot Camp. Uh, it's a few days in a house. We breakfast, lunch, and dinner together, and we work through how to grow your business. Um, and so back in 2019, a young man came to us with an idea to put um, a dental chair in a mobile van. And at the time, he put it in a van, and he went door to door, business to business, school to school with this van, nights and weekends. The first year, he made a few hundred thousand dollars. And so he comes to us for a boot camp and says, I think I've got a business here. And so we spent a few days with him, made some small tweaks. He built a second van in that second year. Uh, we followed his journey, and then he came back to us again and said, I think I can do something bigger. And so we sat down um, with the chairman of our, of our board, Maurice Coffey, who works at Proctor, and 
um, said, hey, we think that we've got a crazy idea. Let's work on finding corporations and um, public entities to get together to provide oral care to all. And so we've done that now in multiple cities around the country. We started a pilot uh, with P&G, Crest, and Oral-B last year. We started the process, and over the last few months, April, May, June of 2022, we went into three cities and tested this project. Um, and it's called Closing America's Smile Gap with Crest and Oral-B. And that three-city pilot um, is now moving on to uh, a 15-city activation. Uh, another company is called Healthy Roots Dolls. It's a little doll with uh, curly hair, multicultural textured hair that allows little black girls to better love and understand their curls. And so two years ago, they did a very large marketing campaign with Pantene Gold uh, and My Black is Beautiful. And so we've had multiple companies that we've worked with, but those are kind of highlights that um, kind of fit here at P&G. So a few years ago when I was learning to invest, um, because it's a process of picking good companies that could potentially grow and be, you know, billion dollar businesses. Uh, I went out to a biotech conference in San Francisco um, and they give you this book and you sift through the book and you can figure out like, you know, which ones do you think are gonna be winners and, and losers? So um, I sifted through the book and I looked for the demographics of people that we invest in. So I looked for, you know, women's names um, throughout. And I went into a room with a young lady who started a company, um, it's a progesterone ovulation test. And it's a room full of men and me. Like, I'm the only woman in the room. And I was the only black woman at the conference. And she gets up and she tells the story of how she had had multiple miscarriages and friends around her had too. And she has a doctorate of pharmacology, Dr. Amy Beckley. And she told the story how she'd cobbled together some off the shelf um, components to build uh, the world's first viable urine diagnostic test to test your progesterone levels. We ended up becoming her first investor. Um, it was my first kind of um, femtech investment. And since then, um, they are in multiple re retailers. They um, are also sold direct to consumer. They just finished a Series A with Quest Diagnostics, um, which isn't a small feat. And they're going, growing quite rapidly, not only in that space for fertility, but also moving into menopause. For me, I think the advice is always, you know, follow your true north. Uh, make certain that you know what you're building, why, why you're building it. And while lots of opinions may, may come around you, make certain that you're following the reason that you got into it. I always let people know that from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., you can be working on that thing before you quit your job. <laughs> it's always important to know that you have a customer there out in the, out in the world. And so spend those hours that you could be, you know, you, you might be on a streaming platform or on social media. Spend that time instead on trying to build something in a very small and incremental way. And I would also say, like, just don't give up. This is the hardest work in the world, starting something and getting people to, to buy in on it. Um, but it's all about not quitting. There are so many times I could have, uh, and it's just, it's just about not giving up. So, you know, following your true north, spending some time before you actually quit that thing, um, and then finally just, just not giving up. Thank you.